Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Attorney Javier Law Vlog. Today we begin with a new topic and we'll be talking about the Intellectual Property Law, which is found under Republic Act Number no. 8293, otherwise RA 8293, if I will be mentioning it later on. Okay, and specifically today, we'll be talking about the law on patents. So if you like my videos and you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. Also, please remember that this is only for educational purposes and is not a substitute for proper legal advice or for studying and understanding the law. Now, a like on this video or any of my other videos would also be greatly appreciated. Okay? So the law on patents is found in the Intellectual Property Code. And being an intellectual creation, it is one of the modes of acquiring ownership. Okay? So a patent is an exclusive right acquired over an invention to sell, to use, and to make the same, no? Whether for commerce or industry. And Section 21 of the Intellectual Property Code defines patentable inventions as any technical solution of a problem in any field of human activity which is new, involves an inventive step, and is industrially applicable. Okay? And if uh, those requirements are satisfied, then it shall be patentable. Okay? It may be or it may relate to a product a process or an improvement of any of the foregoing okay now the purpose of a patent system is not to reward the individual inventor but the advancement of the arts and the sciences the function of a patent is to add to the sum of useful knowledge and one of the purposes of the patent system is to encourage dissemination of information concerning discoveries and inventions. The ultimate goal of the patent system is to bring new designs and technologies into the public domain through disclosure. Of course, the inventor may choose not to get a patent and he can keep his, his invention secret forever. And then he can also reap the fruits indefinitely. Okay? But in this case, the danger is that ideas, once it is disclosed or the information is stolen, okay, and it is now in the public, then it will not be protected by a patent. Then it will be now subject to appropriation without significant restraint. On the other hand, if uh, the invention is protected by a patent, the inventor enjoys protection of the law for a specific number of years, which I will discuss later. And after that period of years uh, expires, then it will now go to the public domain and anyone can now exploit the invention. Okay, so that's a trade-off. No patent no protection but if you can manage to keep the security you can uh, over the information then you can keep reaping the rewards all to yourself indefinitely but under the patent system you are protected but there is a time limit for the protection okay so the patent system embodies a bargain for encouraging the creation and disclosure of new useful and non-obvious advances in technology in, and design in return for the exclusive right to practice the invention for a number of years in consideration of its disclosure and the consequent benefit to the community, the patent will be granted. An exclusive enjoyment is guaranteed to the inventor, but upon expiration of the period, the knowledge of the invention now inures to the public. It goes into the public domain, and then the public will now be enabled to practice it and profit by its use. So the patent law has a threefold purpose. First, to foster and reward invention. Second, 
to promote disclosures of inventions, to stimulate further innovation, and to permit the public to practice the invention once the patent expires. And third, the stringent requirements for patent protection seek to ensure that the ideas in the public domain remain there for the free use of the public. Now, in order for an invention to be patentable, the same must satisfy the three requisites I mentioned earlier. Again, inventive step, industrial appl applicability, uh, novelty, inventive step, and industrial applicability. Okay? First, let's talk about novelty. Under Section 23, an invention is new or novel if it does not form part of prior art. And what is prior art? Under Section 24, prior art shall consist of everything which has been made available to the public anywhere in the world before the filing date of or the priority date of the application claiming the invention. And second, the whole contents of the application for a patent, utility model, or industrial design registration which is published in accordance with the intellectual property law, filed or effective in the Philippines, with a filing or priority date that is earlier than the filing or priority date of the application. Okay? So that we, those two are fall under prior art. Okay? So if the invention does not form part of prior art, then the first requisite of novelty is satisfied. Second requisite, inventive step. Under Section 26, an invention involves an inventive step if having regard to prior art, no, you test it against the prior art already in existence, it is not obvious to a person who is skilled in the art at the, at the time of the filing date or priority date of the application claiming the invention. Okay? And third requisite, industrial applicability. Under Section 27, an invention that can be produced and used in any industry shall be industrially applicable. Okay? So there must be applications in industry. So all three requisites must be present in order for an invention to qualify as a patent. What if one of the requisites is absent? May it still uh, qualify for registration? It will depend. Okay? If the invention is new and industrially applicable but it does not involve an inventive step, then it may qualify for registration as a utility model. Okay? A utility model is any model or of implements or tools or any industrial product or part thereof which is of practical utility or offers a technical reason of its form, configuration, or composition. Okay? It may be or may relate to a product, process, or improvement of the foregoing. No? It essentially refers to an invention in the mechanical field. Okay? Take note, the utility model cannot be patented but it may be registered for a period of 7 years from the date of filing without possibility of renewal. A previous application for a patent, no? let's say he, the inventor initially applied for a patent, he may convert it later on for a, to an application for a utility model. But take note, an applicant cannot file two applications over the same invention, one for patent and one for utility model, at the same time or consecutively. That cannot be done. Pili ka lang isa. Okay? Now, if an invention is new, but it is not industri industrially applicable and does not involve an inventive step, it will not qualify for a patent. But it may qualify for registration as an industrial design. An industrial design is any composition of lines or colors or any three-dimensional form, whether or not associated with lines or colors, provided that such composition or form gives a special appearance to and can serve as a pattern for an industrial product or handicraft. Okay? 
So let's say uh, this fountain pen, no? The invention of a fountain pen per se, no? This uh, fountain pen and the uh, ink uh, replacement, no? This can be uh, covered by a patent, no? If you're the very first person to invent a fountain pen. Now, in this fountain pen, there is a clip. No, to which you uh, which will hold the pen in place let's say the inventor was not able to invent the clip and then you added the clip no that's not necessarily an inventive snap so you cover that under a utility model okay and anything else that adds utility to the pen like a new way of putting ink which does not involve an inventive step that can fall under a utility model okay and now the design of the clip into an arrow, okay, that's uh, that's not uh, that does that's not industrially applicable. It does not involve an inventive step, so that may qualify, okay, may qualify as an industrial design, okay. So uh, any design there, the grooves, the arrow, the shape of the arrow, that may fall under an industrial design, okay. Now, the law provides for certain articles which are excluded from patent protection. These are the non-patentable inventions, which include first, discoveries, scientific theories, and mathematical methods. No, let's say you came up with a formula. Okay, that's not patentable. Second, schemes, rules, and methods of performing mental acts, playing games, or doing business, and programs for computers. Those are not patentable. Third, methods for treatment of the human or animal body by surgery or therapy and diagnostic methods practiced in the human or animal body. Okay, those are not patentable. Okay, but th this excludes products and composition for use in any method. No, so let's say uh, those medicines, etc., that's different, those may be subject of uh, patent. Okay, next. Next one in the list of non-patentable inventions would be plant varieties or animal breeds. Okay? Yang Shih Tzu. Okay? That's an animal breed for a dog. Okay? Or essentially biological process for the production of plants or animals. Those are not patentable. Okay? But uh, take note also that uh, from these are excluded microorganisms and non-biological and microbiological processes. In those cases, those may be patented. But uh, plant varieties, animal breeds, non-patentable. Okay? Aesthetic creations, no, works of art, they are non-patentable. But they may be subject of copyright, which I'll talk about in a different episode. And uh, the last is anything which is contrary to public order or mora morality. Of course, those cannot be subject of, uh, not of a, a patent. Like let's say a machine that can uh, manufacture a prohibited drug efficiently and quickly. Of course, that's contrary to public uh, order or morality. If, if not, in fact, contrary to law. Okay? So in that case, that cannot be subject, that machine cannot be subject of a patent. So, to whom does the right to a patent belong? Under Section 28, the right to a patent belongs to the inventor, his heirs, or his assigns. When two or more persons have jointly made an invention, okay, dalawa sila, nag-cooperate, the right to a patent shall belong to them jointly. Take note of the first to file rule under Section 29. Okay? If two or more persons have made the invention separately and independently of each other, no, nasa magkaibang lugar sila, okay? They made the invention independently of each other, the right to the patent shall belong to the person who filed an application for the invention. Kung sino una nag-file, hindi eh sa kanya yung patent. And where two or more applications are filed for the same invention, Okay? Then it will go to the applicant who has the earliest filing date or the earliest priority date. When we say priority date, 
this is the date of filing of the foreign application in case the patent was applied for abroad, no? Over the same invention. And under Section 31, an application for a patent filed by any person who has previously applied for the same invention in another country, which by treaty, convention, or law affords similar uh, privileges to Filipino citizens, shall be considered as filed on the date of filing of the foreign application. Okay? So let's say uh, he filed an application abroad and then he files also an application here. He can ask the IPO here, the Intellectual Property Office, to consider his filing date here as the, to consider the filing date abroad, which is earlier, as the filing date of his registration here. Okay? Provided that the law requires uh, compliance with the following, no? The local application must expressly create claim priority it must be filed within 12 months from the date the earliest foreign application was filed and a certified copy of the foreign application together with an English translation is filed within 6 months from the date of filing in the Philippines. Okay? So, let's say a person invents something but before he can apply for a patent his neighbor copies it he looks over the pader and then he sees oh that's a good invention and that neighbor now files a patent before the original inventor so by virtue of the earlier filing the neighbor is now entitled to a patent does the original inventor have a remedy Yes, okay. The remedy of the original inventor is to file a petition for cancellation of the patent on the ground that he is the true and actual inventor. Okay, and his and uh, his petition may include a prayer that he now be substituted as the patentee. Okay? So that's the remedy of the true and actual inventor. Okay, those are key words, the true and actual inventor. Now, who owns the right to the patent in case of inventions created pursuant to a commission? You know what a commission is? I ask someone to make something for me, I'm commissioning him to do that, okay? So under Section 30, the person who commissions the work shall own the patent unless otherwise provided in the contract, okay? Take note of that rule. Now, in case the employee made the invention in the course of his employment contract, then the patent shall belong either to the employee or the employer depending on the circumstances, which are the following. First, it will belong to the employee if the inventive activity is not part of his regular duties, even if the employee uses the time, facilities, and materials of the employer. Kung baga, he's not working, and he was just working on his invention. Okay? So, in that case, the invention will belong to the employee. But, the patent will belong to the employer if the invention is the result of the performance of his regularly assigned duties unless there is an agreement expressed or implied to the contrary. Okay? So, ultimately, it will depend on the employment contract no? or any other contract. If the contract allows the employee to be the owner, even if uh, the invention was made during the course of his duties at work, then the contract will be followed. Okay? Now, once a person obtains a right to a patent, then he is protected for a term of 20 years from the date of filing of the application. Okay? So, uh, 20 years, huh? In case of utility models, the term of protection is 7 years from the application and for industrial design, 5 years from application which is renewable, not more than 2 times thereafter, each with a term of 5 years. Okay? So take note of that again, 20 years for patent, 7 years for utility models, 5 years for industrial design and that's the only one which can be renewed not more than 2 times so thereafter each with a term of 5 years. Yung patent and the utility model, they're not uh, renewable. Okay? So how does one apply for a patent? I won't go into details na. Okay? But of course, the inventor must file an application with the IPO, the Intellectual Property Office, which must be subject to the rule of unity of invention. Meaning, that the, that the application shall relate to one invention only or to a group of inventions forming a single general inventive concept. 
However, take note, the fact that a patent has been granted on an application that did not comply with the requirement of unity of invention, that's not a ground to cancel the patent, okay? So, the application will be given a filing date, then the IPO will examine compliance with the requirements of the law on the contents of the application. Then, the IPO will classify the application. It will make a search for prior art. No, uh, It will check if the, the requisite of novelty has been uh, complied with. No, And if everything is or in order, the IPO will publish the application and a document citing the prior art, if any, after 18 months from the filing or priority date, and it will be published in the IPO Gazette. After publication, any interested party may inspect the application documents and within six months from publication, the applicant may submit a written request for the substantive examination. Okay? And now the IPO during that examination may grant or refuse the patent. In case of refusal, the applicant may appeal to the director of the Bureau of Patents and if granted, then the, pan the patent will be published in the IPO Gazette. Okay? Take note that publication already grants the applicant certain rights under Section 46. Specifically, the right to bring civil actions for infringement against any person who, without authorization from the applicant, has wrongfully exercised the rights properly belonging to the applicant in relation to the invention claimed in the published patent application. Provided that, okay, these are important, provided that the offender had actual knowledge that the invention that he was using was the subject matter of a published application or had received notice, written notice, that the invention that he was using was the subject matter of a published application being identified in the said notice by its serial number. Take note, however, that the action may not be filed until after the grant of a patent on the published application and within four years from the commission of the acts complained of. Okay, so there's a time limit within which to bring the action. Even though he has a right, by virtue of publication, he still the applicant still has to observe the time uh, limit given in the law. Okay? Now, at the time of the making of this episode, the IPO allows the electro electronic filing of applications for patents. So, for more information, if you are a scientist or inventor who wants to apply for a patent, just check out the IPO website at ipophil.gov.ph and they have instructions there. Or you can leave a comment down below if you're interested in filing for a patent. Okay? Of course, if the IPO can grant a patent, it may also cancel a patent in whole or in part. And under Section 61, it is done upon petition of any interested person on the following grounds. First, that what is claimed as the invention is not new or patentable. Second, that the patent does not disclose the invention in a manner sufficiently clear and complete for it to be carried out by any person skilled in the art. Or, third, that the patent is contrary to public order or morality. That's section 61. You can just check that if you didn't catch it. Okay? So, what are the rights granted by a patent? Under section 71, a patent shall confer on its owner the following exclusive rights. First, where the subject matter of the patent is a product. Okay? then he has the right to restrain, prohibit, and prevent any unauthorized person or entity from making, using, offering for sale, actually selling, or importing that product. Okay? Now, if the subject matter of the patent is a process, then he has the right to restrain, prevent, prohibit any unauthorized person or entity from using the process and from manufacturing, dealing in, using, selling, or offering for sale, or importing any product obtained directly or indirectly from such process. Okay? 
And now, take note, patent owners shall also have the right to assign or transfer by succession the patent and to conclude licensing contracts for the same. In the case of assignment or transfer, it may be of the entire patent or a portion of the patent, okay? It can be limited also to a specified territory, but the assignment or transfer must be in writing, acknowledged before a notary public, and certified under the hand or seal of the notary. While recording of the assignment with the IPO is not necessary for validity, it is necessary in order to bind third persons. Take note, okay? Remember your obligon. Moreover, the assignment will be void as against any subsequent purchaser or mortgagee for valuable consideration and without notice unless it is so recorded with the IPO within three months from the date of said instrument or prior to the subsequent purchase or mortgage. Okay, So that's for assignment or transfer. As for licensing, the law allows a patentee to exploit a patented invention through voluntary or compulsory licensing. Those are two different things, okay? If a person works on a patented product, substance, and or process under a license, then he shall not be liable for infringement, okay? So, uh, basta may lisensya ka, hindi ka liable for infringement. First, voluntary licensing. Okay, voluntary licensing is the grant by the patent owner to a third person of the right to exploit the patented invention. Since the purpose of the law is to encourage the transfer and dissemination of technology and to prevent or control practices and conditions that may, in particular cases, constitute an abuse of intellectual property rights and have an adverse effect on competition and trade, therefore, the law prohibits certain clauses in voluntary licensing contracts. Okay, Some examples, so the list is long, just uh, take note that there are some examples such as those which impose upon the licensee the obligation to acquire from a specific source capital goods, intermediate products, raw materials, and other technologies. Okay? Or another prohibited clause would be permanently employing personnel indicated by the licensor. Okay? Or those that contain restrictions regarding the volume and structure of production or those that prohibit the use of competitive technologies in a non-exclusive technology transfer arrangement. No? So uh, the purpose of these prohibitory clauses is, to, uh, is in line with the purpose of the law, again, to prevent or control practices that may constitute an abuse of intellectual property rights, which will have an adverse effect on competition and trade. The law wants uh, free competition, no? Okay? Now, so again, the list is very long, so if you're at the stage of voluntary li licensing, you may either just read the list or you can consult a lawyer, okay? And the, also, there are certain mandatory provisions on the law governing uh, interpretation of the contract, venue of litigation, access to improvements, arbitration, and that the licensor shall bear payments of the tax, okay? With regard to those clauses, just take note that non-conformance with those clauses shall automatically render the technology transfer arrangement unenforceable. Okay, unless said technology transfer arrangement is approved and registered with the Documentation, Information, and Technology Transfer Bureau of the IPO. As for the rights of the licensor and the licensee, once granted, then the license shall not prevent the licensor from granting further licenses to third persons nor from exploiting the subject matter of the technology transfer arrangement himself. Okay? While the licensee shall be entitled to exploit the subject matter of the technology transfer arrangement during the whole term of said arrangement. Okay? So now we go to compulsory licensing, which is the grant of a license to exploit a patented invention even without the agreement of the patent owner in favor of any person who has shown his capability to exploit the invention under, under any of the following circumstances. First, 
national emergency or other circumstances of extreme urgency. Second, where the public interest, in, part in particular national security, nutrition, health, or the development of other vital sectors of the national economy, okay, so requires. Third, where a judicial or administrative body has determined that the manner of exploitation by the owner of the patent or his licensee is anti-competitive. Fourth, in case of public non-commercial use of the patent by the patentee without satisfactory reason. And fifth, if the patented invention is not being worked in the Philippines on a commercial scale, although capable of being worked without satisfactory reason. Okay? Take note that the compulsory license shall not be exclusive but it cannot be assigned except with that part of the enterprise or business with which the invention is being exploited. Also, use of the subject matter of the license shall be devoted predominantly for the supply of the Philippine market except if the license was granted on the ground that the patentee's manner of exploiting the patent is determined by a judicial or administrative process to be anti-competitive. The license may be terminated upon proper showing that the circumstances which led to its grant, the national emergency, etc., no, those circumstances have ceased to exist and are unlikely to recur. And the license may further be cancelled upon request of the patentee if the licensee has neither begun to supply the domestic market nor has made serious preparation therefor, or if the licensee has not complied with the prescribed terms of the license. The licensee may also voluntarily surrender the license by a written declaration submitted to the IPO. Kumbaga, ayoko na, sayo na, balik ko na. Okay? So, what benefit does the patentee get from licensing? Royalties. Okay? In the, in the case, royalties meaning money. In the case of voluntary licensing, the parties can agree on the amount to be paid by the licensee. In compulsory licensing, the law sets a test for determining the adequacy of the royalty payment, specifically the economic value of the grant or authorization. Specifically, Section 100.6 states that the patentee shall be paid adequate remuneration taking into account the economic value of the grant or authorization except that in cases where the license was granted to remedy a practice which was determined after judicial or administrative process to be anti-competitive, the need to correct the anti-competitive practice may be taken into account in fixing the remuneration. So, we already went through the rights of the patentee. Okay? The law, however, provides for limitations upon patent rights under Section 72. The owner of a patent has no right to prevent third parties from performing without his authorization the rights granted by a patent in the following circumstances. Okay, he cannot prohibit the third person from doing these. First, using a patent, patented product which has been put on the market in the Philippines by the owner of the product or with his express consent insofar as such use is performed after that product has been so put on the said market. Okay? Second, the patent owner cannot prohibit third persons where the act is done privately and on a non-commercial scale or for a non-commercial purpose, okay? Provided, of course, that it does not significantly prejudice the economic interests of the owner of the patent. Third, where the act consists of making or using exclusively for the purpose of experiments that relate to the subject matter of the patented invention. Fourth, where the act consists of the preparation for individual cases in a pharmacy or by a medical professional of a medicine in accordance with a medical prescription or acts concerning the medicine so prepared. Fifth, 
where the invention is used in any ship, vessel, aircraft, or land vehicle of any other country entering the territory of the Philippines temporarily or accidentally, provided of course that such invention is used exclusively for the needs of the ship, vessel, etc., no? and not used for the manufacturing of anything to be sold within the Philippines. Now, take note of the rule of on prior user under Section 73, which states that any prior user who, in good faith, was using the invention or has undertaken serious preparations to use the invention in his enterprise or business before the filing date or priority date of the application on which a patent is granted, okay, he shall have the right to continue the use thereof as envisaged in such preparations within the territory where such patent produces the effect. Okay, So that's uh, the rule on prior user. The right of the prior user may only be transferred or assigned together with his enterprise or business or with that part of his enterprise or business in which the use or preparations for use have been made. Take note also of section 74 on the use of the invention by the government. Okay, A government agency or third person authorized by the government may exploit the invention even without agreement of the patent owner where the public interest, in particular national security, nutrition, health, or development or other sectors so requires or second, a judicial or administrative body has determined that the manner of exploitation by the owner of the patent or his licensee is anti-competitive. Finally, we can now go to infringement. Okay, this is very important and it's a common topic in uh, exams. Okay, infringement is the making, using, offering for sale, selling, or importing a patented product or uh, product obtained directly or indirectly from a patented process or the use of a patented process without the authorization of the patentee. Take note that the law not only punishes the person who directly infringes a patent, but it, the law also punishes a contributory infringer. Section 76.6 says, Anyone who actively induces the infringement of a patent or provides the infringer with a component of a patented product or of a product produced because of a patented process, knowing it to be especially adopted for infringing the patented invention and not suitable for substantial non-infringing use, shall be liable as a contributory infringer and he shall be his li liability is he will be jointly and severally liable meaning solidarily liable with the infringer now remember a patentee shall have the exclusive right to make use and sell the patented machine article or product for the purpose of industry or commerce throughout the philippines for the term of the patent and such making, using, or selling by any person without the authorization of the patentee, that constitutes infringement. So in order to infringe a patent, a machine or device must perform the same function or accomplish the same result by identical or substantially identical means, and the principle or mode of operation must be substantially the same. In this regard, the law provides for two tests, the literal infringement test and the doctrine of equivalence. Under the literal infringement test, resort must be had in the first instance to the words of the claim. If the accused matter clearly falls within the claim, there is infringement. Okay? To determine whether the particular item falls within the literal meaning of the patent claims or whether there is exact identity of all material elements, the court must put the claims of the patent and the accused product side by side within the context of the claims and specifications. In the simply put, no, the name itself literal infringement, no? This is what the patent application says, and this is the product, they are the same. 
then there is literal infringement okay it liter the accused product literally infringes the uh, patented invention okay for the doctrine of equivalence an infringement takes place when a device appropriates a, a prior invention by incorporating its innovative concept and although with some modification and change performs substantially the same function in substantially the same way to achieve substantially the same result. Kumbaga, kumopia ka sa klase mo. Yun na yun. It's not exactly the same. Iniba mo konti. That's the doctrine of equivalence. Okay? Put differently, an alteration in a patented combination which merely substitutes another old ingredient for one of the ingredients in the patented combination is an infringement of the, the patent if the substitute performs the same function and was well known at the date of the patent as a proper substitute for the omitted ingredient. Okay? The doctrine of equivalence requires satisfaction of the function, mean, and result test. The patentee has to show that all three components of the test are met. The function, the means, and the result. Okay? That's why it's called the function, mean, and result test. So, in case there is an infringement of a patent, the law allows the patentee or anyone possessing any right, title, or interest in the patented invention whose rights have been infringed, the law allows them to bring a civil action before a court to recover from the infringer damages and, if warranted, royalties, plus attorney's fees and other expenses of litigation, not to mention also to secure an injunction for the protection of his rights. Okay, Aside from asking that the infringing goods, materials, and implements predominantly used in the infringement be destroyed. Okay? The prescriptive period, meaning the time within which to file the action for damages, is four years from the commission of the infringement. In case a criminal case for a repeated infringement is brought, it must be brought within three years from the date of the commission of the crime. Take note, repeated criminal case only applies in repeated infringement. Now, one essential requirement in order for an action for infringement to be brought is the knowledge of the infringer. Section 80 says that damages cannot be recovered for acts of infringement committed before the infringer had known or had reasonable grounds to know of the patent. It is presumed that the infringer had known of the patent if on the patented product or on the container or the package of the article that is supplied to the public or on the advertising material related to the patented product or pro process are placed the words Philippine patent with the number of the patent, okay? Or fill path off with the number, okay? So, lack of knowledge of the patent on the part of the infringer is a defense. Another defense is that the infringer may show the invalidity of the patent or any claim thereof or on any of the grounds on which a petition for cancellation can be brought. Other defenses include that what is claimed as the invention is not new or patentable. Another one is the patent does not disclose the invention in a manner sufficiently clear and complete for it to be carried out by any person skilled in the art. Or third, the patent is contrary to public order or morality. Okay, so uh, that's it for our discussion on patents. I hope you may have picked up a thing or two and uh, wait for the next episode where I'll talk about trademarks and in the third episode of this series, I'll talk about copyrights, okay? So I hope to see you soon, guys, okay? See you next time. Bye.